Question two and the mark scheme can be bullet pointed into seven tasks. They are number one, fixing errors in programs such as syntax, runtime, and logic. Number two, output to the display using the print statement. Number three, taking user input using the input statement. Fourthly, meaningful identifier names. Number five, techniques for increasing readability and maintainability. These might include comments, white space, layout, and indentation. Number six, using test conditions to decide on pass through the program code using things like selection techniques. And number seven, using test data to check if a program is behaving as expected. This is the original question from the GCSE 2020 Computer Science Specimen Assessment Material. This type of question simulates the development process that students will have encountered during their class lessons. There are syntax, runtime, or logic errors that need to be fixed to create a functional solution to a problem. There are improvements needed to the code to make it more maintainable. Students are provided with scaffolded bullets indicating the amendments that need to be made to the code. In this question, the inputs are described as well as the anticipated outputs. This is, in effect, the test data for the code. Students can use it to make judgments about the completeness of the code they produce. This is the file that the students are given during the exam. Students are provided with additional comments in the code to remind them of the tasks that they need to address. In summary, the marks for response A were awarded as follows. Line 14, one mark for fixing syntax error by adding a colon to the if statement. Line 16, one mark for fixing syntax error by adding a bracket before the colon. Line 18, one mark for fixing syntax error by adding quotes before the bracket. Line 11, zero marks are awarded for displaying a suitable question as this was not attempted. Line 13, one mark for accepting Y and N using the input function. Line five, zero marks for changing X to a more meaningful identifier as this was not attempted. Line 16, zero marks for comment added because it does not indicate understanding of the use of minus one to implement reverse stepping in the for loop. Line six, one mark for additional blank space to separate global variables from code. There were no other instances. And finally, one mark for correct output given Y or N. The total marks awarded for response A was six. You or your students may wish to annotate onto this example those accredited points, and then look at how they might improve them to score a higher mark. For response B, marks were awarded as follows. One mark for fixing the syntax error by adding colon to the if statement on line 13. Line 15, one mark for fixing the syntax error by adding a bracket before the colon. Line 17, one mark for fixing syntax error by adding quotes before the bracket. Line 10, zero marks for suitable message as this was not attempted. Similarly, line 12, zero marks for input as this was not attempted. Line 13, zero marks for changing X to a meaningful identifier as it is only done on line five and not on line 13. Zero marks for comment on range as not attempted on line 15. And zero marks for additional white space as none was found throughout the code. Line 13, zero marks for correct functioning as now X generates a name error so you cannot enter Y or N. The total marks awarded for this response are three. Again, review the mark explanation document for additional explanation, including how this candidate could have improved their response. You might want to consider how different this response was to the first, and again, how you might improve this response to achieve higher marks. As always, the best way to create a question of this type is to start with a working solution. 
decide how many, if any, of each error type to include in the mark scheme. If including layout and readability techniques, then be sure there is scope for these in the question. That is to say, make the code less readable and or use non-meaningful identifiers. Ensure that the actual solution is accessible so that students don't need to devote a large amount of time to analysis of the problem before they can understand what is required. Ordering the bullet points in the order that they need to be addressed will provide students with further clues to addressing this type of question. For example, fixing all the syntax errors first might be appropriate just to get the code to run. Questions like this give students the opportunity to demonstrate skills in the development of working solutions. You can use this flow chart as a step-by-step -step guide to both support the creation of this question type, but also the decision-making behind creating an accessible and challenging question for your students to complete.